Hi guys, Liam here with the second part of my introduction to global climate change as part of the IB Geography course. If you guys haven't seen the first video, I encourage you guys to check that out. Uh, we gave a kind of overview of what the atmospheric system is, what is the energy balance, and what are some of the factors that might affect um, solar insulation. So that's energy coming from the sun into the Earth's atmosphere. You guys remember what the energy balance is? It's that, it's that balance between um, the, the solar radiation coming into the Earth um, versus that long wave radiation that is subject to sometimes being trapped by greenhouse gases, thus leading to the greenhouse effect. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the factors that affect um, the balance uh, and look at something called a feedback loop, which I know a lot of students sometimes struggle with. For me, as soon as you get your head around it, it's an easy way to bank some marks in that option paper, that paper to you for you guys. But let's get into it. Let's talk about albedo first and foremost. And for you guys who haven't heard of it before, um, it's the proportion of light or radiation which is reflected by a surface. So if you if you have a higher albedo, that means it's really reflective. Low albedo means you, more of that kind of radiation is absorbed. So an example of, of a material with a high albedo would be something like snow, grass, vegetation, that sort of thing. A lower albedo would be um, something like asphalt, Okay, that's the material that a lot of highways and, and motorways are made out of. Absorbs a lot of that radiation. And um, similarly, something like soil, something that's darker, is, and is, is less able to reflect um, some of that radiation. And some causes of changing albedo, well, if you just think about what um, has, a, has a high albedo, a low albedo, how is that being affected by processes? Something like deforestation, okay, before um, we had, um, it had a high albedo, really. A vegetation is very good at reflecting. Um, some of that solar radiation, you cut that down, we actually reduce the albedo, the reflectiveness of the earth, okay, and more of that energy is trapped. And that is obviously more kind of subject then to um, when it's emitted as long wave radiation being absorbed um, again by the earth in this greenhouse effect that we mentioned in the last video. I want to now bring up the idea of a positive feedback loop. Okay, so a positive feedback loop um, occurs in nature when the product of a reaction leads to an increase in that reaction. So when the start of something okay, leads to some sort of outcome, that outcome when kind of put back into um, the reaction leads to an increase in it. So if we're talking about albedo, which luckily we are, let's say we have this darker surface, okay, we have that low albedo, more of that solar radiation is absorbed, that solar radiation leads to warming, that can melt ice, Ice we mentioned has a very high albedo, um, which might lead to some soil. Soil, um, comparatively, has a lower albedo. That then, kind of as the output, shows that we have an even lower albedo. Therefore, that reaction continues. So positive doesn't mean a good thing. It just means an increase in um, the uh, reaction due to the output of that initial reaction. Um, similarly, let's say we have um, a lighter surface, so something like... Um, ice okay um, as a high al albedo and um, that ice reflects a lot of that solar radiation it's not absorbed it doesn't then melt the ice so the melts the ice then expands let's say or doesn't melt that leads to a positive um, increase in the reaction because we still have that lighter surface in fact we have an extension in the material that has a high albedo you see what i mean so we have that input then the output and then when that output goes back to that input it increases the reaction um, if I move my face out of the way, you guys can see an example of a um, negative feedback loop. So uh, you guys might be doing biology right now. If you are, this could be super useful. But we have this um, glucagon secreted. Okay, so we have an increase in our blood glucose levels. Because of that, insulin is secreted. The thing about insulin, okay, is it helps to lower blood glucose levels. Therefore, we have reduction in the glucagon secreted. So we have a uh, we have the start, okay, and the output of that start is something like insulin. Is something that's going to actually slow down that reaction. That's why it's a negative feedback loop. And you guys can use these ideas on this next little bit of information based on um, the enhanced greenhouse effect. So we've mentioned the greenhouse effect a lot um, in this um, these couple of episodes. And the greenhouse effect is independent okay, of human action. So that, that change between shortwave radiation and longwave radiation is a natural thing. The enhanced greenhouse effect is the way that humans are influencing um, that balance. So the greenhouse effect keeps us warm. That's a good thing. We need that. Uh, but the enhanced greenhouse effect, that's where there's a lot of controversy. That's where we have this um, the, the fears of global climate change. Um, so burning fossil fuels okay, and deforestation tend to be a really 
big way of increasing the number of greenhouse gases in the um, atmosphere. And those greenhouse gases, they can absorb that long wave radiation, therefore speeding up the heating of the earth. And methane is a really potent greenhouse gas. I and mean, it's increasing one year, 1% 1 per year per annum, um, and cattle emit approximately 100 million tons each year. So this is not something to kind of be un can understate. Um, and that permafrost melting leads to further methane. So permafrost is just a type of um, ice really, and underneath it we have a lot of methane. So actually as we heat up, we can release more methane. And that is a perfect example of a positive feedback loop. And if I move myself out of the way again, it's not actually taking ages, but Ooh, I had it. Uh, there we go. Um, you guys can see what I mean. So we have methane as a strong greenhouse gas that obviously leads to an increase in, in rising global temperatures. Those temperatures mean that the ice melts. Um, ice melting means that we have that lower lower albedo. We're less able to reflect um, that light. That leads to a um, lower albedo. Sorry. So we have the ice that had a high albedo, high reflectiveness, leading to a, a lower. We absorb even more. Okay. That then melts the soil. Okay. and then penetrates and hits the permafrost, which is a layer below. That permafrost um, was containing a lot of methane. That methane is then released. So from that methane being in the atmosphere, okay, it helps to actually create more methane in the atmosphere. And that's that's through warming the earth, melting the ice, um, exposing the soil to more of that radiation. That then leads to permafrost below the, the surface being um, opened up or, or, or melted, and therefore we have more methane a very, very potent greenhouse gas released. And it's been long ignored as a greenhouse gas. It has a relatively short um, lifespan, but in those particular years, um, it's had 84 to 86 more effect at warming than carbon dioxide. So when we're talking about carbon dioxide, it's obviously an issue, but let's not neglect to talk about methane and the effect that has on the environment and the positive feedback that um, methane is a part of. Cool, this is the final thing I just wanna show you guys. This is what I mean by the difference between the natural greenhouse effect and the you know the enhanced greenhouse effect. Do make sure when you're writing answers to questions based on climate change, you distinguish between the two. The greenhouse effect in its natural form is not a terrible thing. In fact, um, it's somewhat responsible for, for life on earth, but the enhanced greenhouse effect, that's where we can get a little bit more nervous in terms of the rate at which the earth is warming up. Bro, thanks so much for, for tuning in again. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, drop them to me at, it's just Liam at lanternoeducation.com. Um, if there's some more stuff you want to be checking out, we've got loads of YouTube videos um, in terms of um, economics and some of the sciences. We've got lots and lots of free resources on the website as well. You can see the header there, that's lanternoeducation.com. And of course, if you guys want a one-on-one uh, -on -one tutor, check out some of the services we offer with regards to private tuition. Uh, but beyond there, uh, thanks a lot for, for watching and see you guys in the next episode.